everyone's in. Uh, last call for name and county into the chat box. And we are gonna go ahead and get started. We have Dr. Laura Kennedy with us. Um, she is a native of Michigan. She earned her animal science degree at Michigan State University with an emphasis on equine exercise, physiology, and nutrition. During her undergraduate program, she completed a summer internship at Hanover Shoe Farms, returning the next two summers. She got her DVM at MSU. Uh, she was two years as a resident veterinarian at Hanover Shoe Farms, which is a 400 mare commercial standard bred breeding farm. Pathology residency was obtained at Texas A&M University, followed by one year as a staff pathologist in Amarillo. Um, she's been here in Kentucky for 15 years at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab um, right here at UK with an emphasis on racehorse pathology. All right, um, Dr. Kennedy, thank you so much for joining us and I will turn it over to you. Okay, um, again, yeah, I'm Laura Kennedy. I'm here at UK um, sitting in my office and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about um, the thing that brought me to Kentucky, um, which is um, horse pathology. Um, so I think I'm gonna ask some questions. I think the easiest way um, is for you all to enter stuff into the chat. So um, as you know, I'm a pathologist. So what, and I, I work on horses, horse necropsy. So what does that mean? to you guys. Let's go ahead and put something in the chat. Don't be shy. Is it go? Okay, autopsies. Looks at things that are wrong. That's definitely something that I do. Diseases and dead horses, yep. Study the dead tissue. See the diseases and cures test sources of animals. Yeah, excellent. And that's that is, you know, and you guys are right, that's um that's what I do. Um I look at not only deceased animals, um but also tissues um, and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna start with my presentation here. Um, and just with a, oh no, let me go back to the top, sorry about that. So just with a, um, a really basic introduction that um, my lab director would really want me to give. So I am at the University of Kentucky um, Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. And here at the VDL, we look at all species, includes um, a lot of horses, about 50% um, horses, then also a lot of uh, cattle um, and dogs and cats. So at a diagnostic laboratory, which is you know what I work in, we are looking at um, not only diseases of animals that can affect other animals, but also, you know, you're looking at any type of diseases that might affect humans as well. So the idea is we keep everybody healthy. Um, so um, Dr. Camargo wanted to kind of walk you through a necropsy. So as you come to our lab, um, generally it's going to be someone, either an owner, or uh, professional service. So if we have a, you know, a very unfortunate dead horse, um, they're gonna come to our lab right up through these doors and you're going to see um, our receiving staff. Okay, um, so what we have, when we get a horse in, we have this, um, this form that's filled out, which is going to tell us information about the horse, or, um, or whatever type of animal. Um, tells us the age, breed, uh, gender, but then also what was going on with the horse? You know, what was wrong or what did we think was wrong? How long, um, you know, was this horse sick? And particularly if, if there are any other horses 
that might be involved, because that's one of the things we really want to think about as well. Okay, so, you know, when we're looking at doing a postmortem exam or an autopsy, necropsy, I'll mean the same thing. You know, we've got some questions that are really important. Um, and so, you know, like the, the first question is like, right, um, things, look at things that are wrong, look at the disease, um, examine the dead tissue, right? Those are the things you guys said. And that's, that is exactly what we do. That's the first thing that we do. We say, why did this animal die, right? What happened? Um, but then we're also going to be looking at it and saying, okay, so we know why this animal died. Um, do, you know, does what I found in a particular animal that was submitted, does that match up with what the veterinarian or the owner was seeing? Um, if it doesn't match up, why not? Um, I also need to know, you know, one of the things I want to tell people is, are there other animals that could be affected? That's why I need to know, like, if you have other horses on the farm, um, you know, if they've been traveling, what kind of contact they've had, because that's one of the other questions that I need to answer is, will there be other animals affected? Um, and what can we do about that? And if we look at, you know, this animal died, that's okay. So in the future, what can we do to correct that, right? Is there something that we could have done differently? Could we change the management things? Maybe, um, in hindsight, we could see, okay, something was going on. I didn't realize what it was. You know, those are all the type of questions um, that we need to answer in addition to why did he die? So, so we have this, we have a really nice facility. The horse is going to be unloaded here in the dock. Um, this is our one of our lovely technicians. Um, this is Sarah Welsh. She's one of the best. So we have you know, this is the nitty gritty of it, right? So, you know, the animal is brought in, in it comes on. We have this very large um, crane system. So we've got a hoist and a crane. We're going to bring the animal in. The technicians are going to weigh that animal because um, that, that's, you know, going to be something very important. You know, is, is this animal of the correct weight for the, the breed it is, um, age, that sort of thing. And also, does it weigh what the owner thought it did? Um, or has it lost a lot of weight? So we're going to weigh the animal. And then we're going to put then the technicians who do an amazing amount of work are going to put all of the animals as they come in, they're going to put them on one of these stainless steel tables. And again, so this is Sarah um, laying out. So this is like a um, this is like a seven or eight month old Angus uh, steer. So we're gonna lay the animals out. Can you all see my pointer when I'm using it here? My arrow? Yes. 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 Perfect. Perfect. So yes. this is another one of our amazing technicians. So this, this is Susan. Um, and all of our technicians um, have uh, bachelor's degrees. Susan has a bachelor's degree in animal science. Sarah um, has a bachelor's degree um, in vet technology, so she's a bachelor's level vet technician. Um, and we have another um, technician who has a bachelor's in biology. And they've all worked here um, for quite a long time, which is really important because as you can see here, so. You've got the animal hanging up. Again, you know, I don't know if you've eaten dinner now or later, um, but you know, this this is uh, this is your dinner here. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to take all of the organs out of the animal for us, and we'll see that I've got a video um, just a little bit later. So they're going to take everything out for us, and so our technicians you know, are, are extremely important. They have to have an incredible amount of training to do what they do, to be able to recognize all of the organs and to know if there's something wrong, um, if they need to tell us. So once we, um, again, I hope it's not, you know, dinner time. Um, I know it is for Dr. Camargo, but I think she can handle it. So once all the organs are on the table, 
from the technicians, then this is um, one of our pathologists, Dr. Chu. So then the pathologist goes through and examines all the organs. Um, so it looks through all of the tissues and we have to decide what's normal, what's abnormal, <laughs> and you know what what we want to do with that. So and then once so then here, so then here's your here's your lunch tray. Um, so here are all the tissue specimens that are going to be sent back to the different laboratories. So when we get to this point, um, we'll have the information about the animal. So we'll have that that form that's been filled out. Um, then we'll have, you know, the animal itself in front of us. And this is a point where we have to kind of, you know, um, make some decisions, say, you know, what do I see here with just which a gross exam? So it's naked eye. So what do I see here that explains some of the, what was reported in the history and, you know, or something that's unexpected. And then what am I going to do next? Like, so this is a point where as a pathologist, I'm gonna start selecting the, the, the tests that go on later. So I'm going to say, you know, okay, maybe this uh, animal has pneumonia, right? So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to look for bacteria, and I'm going to look for viruses, um, or if it had diarrhea, I'm going to look for some, some different um, type of organisms. I'm going to look at things under the microscope. So I'm going to do microscopy on that. And so once I have done all of my exam out on the postmortem floor, which is the necropsy, and then chosen all of my lab tests and sent everything off. Um, then in the end, I get my <clears throat> I get my microscope slides back, I get all the test results, and then I have to kind of put it all together and say, this is what I think happened in this case. And that's where I have to answer the questions. Why did it die? You know. Is it going to affect other animals? Um, and does it make sense? So we'll go. So for, you know, I talked about, we have some lab tests to do, right? So these little bits of tissue are gonna go back through all the, through the doors, back into the laboratory. Um, this is a standard presentation. I'm gonna skip some of this. So we have, yes, can you ask a question? Please, if you have a question, just put it in the chat or um, that's probably the easiest. Jane. Also, if you do have a question, you can also just um, unmute yourself for the moment and ask a question. How many stomachs do, do uh, horses have? What's what do you think the answer is? I think they have one. Correct, just one. Yep, yep. So, um, so the things that I can do here, right? So we can do pathology. That's me. Um, I'm gonna look for bacteria or funguses. So that's bacteriology, just study of bacteria. Mycology, study of, of funguses. Um, Clinical pathology, this is all um, blood, urine, feces, um, histology, it's microscopy, um, magic machines that help me make a diagnosis, serology, toxicology. Okay, so, um, so we're gonna look at some of the videos now, all right? So again, we're gonna go back to the questions, right? Why did this animal die? Do the findings fit with the clinical description? Will other animals be affected? And is there something that can be changed? Um, so, um, so this is gonna be the first video. Um, this is a 15 or 16 year old um, quarter horse type mare. She was actually owned by the university. She was out on pasture. She wasn't on any um, experimental studies. She, um, she wasn't pregnant. She didn't have a full by her side. She hadn't gone anywhere recently and she is vaccinated. So she's really, you know, very um, 
in a lot of ways, very low risk horse, just out on pasture. Um, and then very acutely, which means, you know, so very suddenly, um, she developed a high fever. Her heart rate was up. Her respiratory rate was up, so she was breathing quickly. She had abdominal pain, so she was looking at her belly, um, kind of stretching out, maybe hunching up a little, you know, like alternating between stretching up and hunching, hunching up and stretching out. Um, and she had kind of a foul smell, so her breath smelled bad. Um, and they gave her banamine, which is a painkiller. Um, it also brings down a fever and antibiotics. Um, she didn't. Um, she didn't respond well, and so she had to be um, put to sleep. So, with a history like this, like what kind of things would you think? What kind of things would you be worried about with this this type of horse? You know, fever, breathing fast, heart rates fast, and kind of stretching out. Anybody have any ideas? You can just um, unmute if you want. Or chat. Okay, colic. That's a good one. That's what they thought too. Colic. So, what types of things could be wrong with her? If she's okay. Yeah, the colic. So she was. Um, so she was treated. Um, they did think that she was colicking, right? So that she had belly pain and she had a fever, which is always bad. So if you have the horse is colicking and has a fever, that's, you know, that's, that's not a, that's a bad, bad sign. All right. Now, let's see. Response to treatment. Let me get the right one here. On. May I ask a question? Yep. Second. Um, I, I hope this isn't a dumb question, but uh, no? so you mentioned foul, foul smelling breath, but I know horses uh, can't throw up, right? So Correct. I'm guessing the gases from their stomach can't, you know, uh, come from their mouth. What would make, what would cause the foul smelling breath in this case? Right. Do you, and that's, do you know? that's exactly, that's a really good question. And as soon as I can get the movie to pull up oh sorry. Okay. Just, sorry no 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 you're good you're good mine just it didn't want to come up okay can you guys see this Here, can you guys see the movie it's still on the powerpoint we cannot see it the is? Movie. why is it not doing that all right hold you on. might have to like stop share and then yeah and then start on. again yeah sorry about that New share. How about that? Is that, okay, yes. that worked. Okay, so we've got the magnificent, magnificent Sarah um, on the table. Um, disclaimer: um, This is an old video. Um, we now have to wear some type of eye protection, and Sarah can't wear her beautiful earrings anymore. But. So, um, so this is the mayor. Um, we've put her on the table. And so the first thing that Sarah's going to do, um, because it is, I, I see somebody in the background going, what in the world? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do um, is she's going to take the mammary gland off. So she's going to remove the udder, which is what she's doing right here with this cut, um, taking that skin off. Uh, this mare had only recently died, so there's going to be there's going to be a lot of blood. That's that's not it. Just hasn't um, the blood hasn't clotted a lot yet. So so okay. So Sarah is in a, so then she's going up. So there's the mammary gland is in her hand. So all of this blood is just from. <laughs> you know there's going to be a video. So so as Sarah's going along. She's going to take the skin off and it's just going to get flopped over here. So now, so this area here, so there's um, 
this is the, the wall of the abdomen. So this is some of the, we're gonna go through the skin. She's really, really good at this. She's way better than, than I am. Um, and so here's the wall of the abdomen, the belly. There's the muscle, right? So she's starting to go through the muscle, right? Abdominal muscle. So if anybody's ever strained their abs, that's where we're at right here. So, do a few more cuts. So then there's a very thin lining right here that is between the, the belly wall and the intestines. So um, does anybody think of what we might, that is painful to watch? Yeah, luckily she's, she's not with us. Um, what type of, what would you, think about um what might you see if you, you know a horse has colic um what might you see when you start getting the abdomen open any ideas or something that might look different any twisted gut right so um one of the things we're going to look at is the position and the color of of the of the intestines so here's part of their their colon which is huge right so everything here um it all comes rushing out um but everything here is normal so far so this all of this here this is all large intestine of the horse so this is you know, they have a huge um amount of, of intestine. So Sarah's going to keep peeling everything back. You see intestine coming out. So far, all of the intestines are, you have to trust me, it's in the right spot. Um, everything is the right color. And so as we go along, so now Sarah's going to start taking, taking the intestines out one by this this is the liver right here. Is that the, uh, if that was the question. That's the liver. And the spleen was under here. Okay, yep. So here's the liver. And here are all the attachments that hold the intestine in place. So she's gonna start working with that. Starts. Yeah, they look like worms, yeah. So everything so far is normal. It's all the right color. It's all in the right spot. You can see, I mean, they just have just pretty incredible amount of intestines. And you can see, like, it takes a lot of experience to do this because I'm sure, like, it looks like a big jumble of, of guts, right? It looks like a big pile. It's not as bloody as I thought it would be. Yeah, that's it. Pathologist. Um, so Sarah's then is she's starting to to um, to take the intestines off their attachments and lay them all out. So the whole time she's doing this, um, she's like a lot of vet techs. You know, they are really highly trained. So she is going to be looking at everything as it comes out. You know, make sure that things are the way they should be. And so far, it's all good. Which, you know, this mare maybe had colic, right? It's not, not at all what we're going to be expecting. That's And you can look look away, that's no problem. So again, so of course it's more and more and more and more intestine. Just gonna move it out of the way. So our um, our technicians are also very fit. Um, really impressive. So again, as I'm watching this, um, now I'm starting to think, 
you know, what, what else could be going on, right? Because somebody, somebody earlier um, came up and said something that's very important, right? He said, why would her breath smell if they can't, essentially, they can't, they can't burp. They can't let the gas come off. So, so there's nothing wrong in her abdomen, but, but they tell us in the history that her breath smelled. So what do you, you know, where are we going to look next? Ideas? <laughs> Stuck at Camargo. Right. So right at this point. Nasal or breathing? Yes, right. So something up um, respiratory, um, particularly something up in her nose, because um, that would be, you know, like the, the first place um, that you would get that from. Um, so the, here are kidneys that Sarah's taking out now. Yes, it definitely what I'm thinking of now is what is going on in her chest um, and up um, in her trachea, so her windpipe, um, what's going on up in her nose. Um, so Sarah's going to keep cutting along. And again, this blood is just, um, yeah, that's, and that's just normal. That's just what was in the horse. So there's no actual hemorrhage. She hasn't bled. This is just the amount of blood coming out of her, uh, of her vessels. So right here, so this is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is, I'm sure you know. So the diaphragm is that muscle that goes between your, your chest and your belly. And that's what you move when you breathe, right? So, so what Sarah's gonna do now is she's gonna go in to the diaphragm. Okay, okay there's there's a, a here's a key part of the um, of the video right here, and that is, I see Sarah's nose. Right, so she smelled it. She she smelled what uh, what they were talking about. So now watch. Um, so there really shouldn't be you know aside from their lung your lungs there shouldn't be anything in your chest. There shouldn't be fluid. Um, in your chest, that sort of thing. But in this case, so this mare, so now this is inside the chest. These are her lungs. And so there's this tremendous amount of really, um, really thick fluid, um, a lot of chunks in it. Um, so there's a lot of fluid and with a lot of pus in it. So um, so now we know she has an infection in her chest. We start pulling it out. So, so she has all of this fluid in her chest and this is the surface of her lungs. Um, it's actually covering her lungs, right? Um, and their, your lungs should be pink, and really fluffy, full of air. Um, in this particular case, her lungs are squeezed down um, to almost nothing. And so then there's more, more inflammatory material, more pus all built up around her. So, um, so we talked about with the, this mare's history, um, that she had a fever, that she was uncomfortable. Um, she acted like she had belly pain, even though we know it's not in her belly. Um, she had bad, you know, her breath smelled bad, which we, we know now. Um, so looking at this, why, um, what do you think, why do you think she looked painful? Um, do they have any idea? what was painful did she lack the ability to intake enough oxygen absolutely that's absolutely it it would yes it would hurt to breathe it's really hard to breathe she has all that fluid in her lungs right so when you have um 
when you have all that fluid and all that, um, you know, all that inflammatory material on the between the lungs because and the, the, the chest wall, it's going to rub like sandpaper, um, and so it's going to be very very hard to breathe. So, um, so that's also so her heart rate was high, right? And why would that be? It's you had it already, actually. If the you, oxygen. Yes, right. She couldn't get enough oxygen. Um, so she had to try really, really, really hard. Um, so her heart was going very fast. Her, she was breathing very, very quickly. Um, I had forgotten to put this in the history, um, but she was also, in addition to being, you know, colicky, kind of acting like she had belly pain, she was also very anxious. Um, she's very, you know, very just anxious, very nervous, um, seemed really uncomfortable. And, you know, that's because like, you know, she couldn't breathe. She couldn't get, um, she couldn't get enough air, right? So that, you know, that would, would make you really, really nervous. Um, so that's her. Um, so the unusual thing about this mare, right? So the condition that she had is called pleuropneumonia. Um, it's generally called, um, it can be called shipping fever. Um, which is because the horses that get this have often traveled a long distance or been under some type of stress, whether they're like in a, a racing stable. Um, but this mare had just been sitting out in the pasture, very, very low stress. You know, um, as far as we know, there shouldn't have been anything um, that would have predisposed her to this. It wouldn't, shouldn't have been anything that made her likely to develop this. Um, which is part of the reason that um, they initially didn't didn't think of pleuropneumonia because everything else, including like her age, um, made you think that probably she was colicking, whether she had an impaction colic. So like when there's um, the feed material gets really dry and nothing passes, or if she had um, her large colon, if it was twisted or if it was flipped over in the wrong spot, um, or if she had a twist in her small intestine, all of those things would have been more likely than what actually happened to her. So in this case, it's a bacterial infection. We got multiple uh, bacteria out of it. So for this case, I know why she died. I know why she needed to be euthanized. I know why she was sick. Um, the signs that she was showing um, and what they were reporting makes sense once you look at it um, in hindsight. You can say, okay, all that stuff was actually from her lungs. That makes sense now. Um, you know, are there going to be other animals affected? Probably not. This type of disease, this particular disease, in horses isn't something that um, passes from one horse to another. It is infectious, so it's caused by a bacteria, but it's not transmissible. So she has a bacteria, she's not going to pass it um, to the other horses. So is it going to bother the other horses? No, almost, you know, really no. Um, and then, then the fourth question, right? Um, is there something that we could have done differently with um, her management or you know, things like that. In this case, no, um, because it just happened. It was just a fluke thing. It was just unusual, not expected for her. It's something that just happened. Um, so those are the, you know, so those are the questions that I always think about answering and that I did answer for this one. So let me go back. And let me show the other one. Okay, so we, um, we're back to the PowerPoint, yes? Yes. 
Okay. So then we have a second video. Um, and this one, uh, the mayor actually presented in, in, a, in a similar way, but was much more um, what could be expected. So um, in this particular case, this was a thoroughbred broodmare. She came from one of the farms in the area. Um, she had had a foal within the previous day or two. Excuse me. Um, she started to colic. So she looked, you know, a lot like the other mare. She had a high heart rate. She was uncomfortable um, looking at her belly, uh, kicking, maybe trying to get down and roll, uh, things like that, but did not have any odor coming from her nose as opposed to the other mare. So this mare went to, uh, went to one of the clinics here where they examined her um, and one of the things that you can do for a colic is you take a sample of the um, of, in, of the um, abdominal contents. So you take a little, like a blunt needle, you go in and you take some fluid out of the belly and you examine it. And so she had, um, she actually had um, fecal material in, in her sample of, of um, abdominal fluid. So that, that's a you know, poop in your belly, always very, very bad. Um, so we go to that video. All right, so so there's the answer right here. Um, so again, so uh, another mare, right? So Sarah's already taken off the um, the mammary gland. She so started taking off the skin. You can see right here. You see this this shave spot right here. That's where they've put in um, the little needle um, cannula to take the sample of of fluid. So this one is, is very different from the next. So, um, so I've always said what what the let's keep going, what the fluid looked like that there was um, actually fecal material or um, in the fluid. So as Sarah's um, again cutting through the muscle of the belly wall and through that really thin. Um, lining, peritoneum. It's going to go in again. This muscles are a little flabbier on this girl. She's a mom. And so here you can see it starts to see it's 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 very different, right? Because so now instead of so now she has this tremendous fluid in her abdomen. So. So you can see here, see how this, so that's actually um, intestinal contents right here and all along there, that's all intestinal contents. There's more feed, feed material up here. And then again, you see, this is all really rough, it's inflamed, so this, this is actually um, her uterus. So um, because she just had her full, her uterus is still quite large, um, but her uterus is not affected. So now we're getting into her intestines. Her intestines are a little bit out of place as well. Like this should be all the way down here. So Sarah's gonna start pulling them out. And there's your cecum, right? So this is where it would be normally. And there's the tip of her cecum. So the cecum is this, um, this it's kind of a large, 
uh, triangular part of their intestine comes between the small intestine and the large intestine. And, um, and so she has a rupture up at the base of her cecum. It's gonna be right up in here. And be, we don't get to see it quite closely because it's so covered up, but there's a rupture right up in this part of her cecum. And that's the end for her. Um, yes, the intestine is bruised. Yes, that is definitely um, what's going on as well. Um, it, um, all of that um, material, everything in her abdomen is very, very inflamed. It's very irritated. There's actually a lot of bacteria that have come out from her intestines and have gone out into her abdominal cavity, which is also a very, very bad thing. Um, and so she has a cecal rupture. So there's a little hole in her cecum, a big one. And um, that is actually something. So, okay, so, you know, why was she euthanized? Why was she sick? Right. She had, um, she ruptured her cecum. Um, is this expected with the clinical signs? Yes. Right, so we had a horse that was very colicky, um, and we when we took a sample of abdominal fluid when she, before she was euthanized, you could see the feed material um, and all the inflammatory material in that little sample of of fluid that they took off um, when the mare was alive. Um, so yes, the fact that she had a rupture of her intestines that fits with her history. The other thing that also fits, and we don't know why, um, but the cecal rupture is actually something that happens in broodmares um, that are very close to foaling or just post foaling. We don't we don't know why. Um, whether it's kind of you know when you've got a you know when there's a foal in the uterus getting ready to come out, there's a lot of moving around in there, and you know maybe it puts some stress on that particular spot. Um, we don't really know, but, you know, yep, you know, she's a mare that's post foaling that fits with the sequel rupture. Um, so there's plenty of other mares on the farm. Um, are they going to be affected? No, not in this case. You know, she has an individual problem. Um, could we manage it differently? So um, maybe having it, what's, what's something that we could do differently for management? That it, you know might not happen to this mare. It's an easy one. Right. Don't breed her, right? She's post if, you know, if you hadn't bred her, she wouldn't be post foaling. Um, but so could we change management? Probably not. Um, so in this case, so yes, yeah, so there's the questions we have to answer. Why was she sick and you know and was euthanized? Um, is it going to affect you know the other horses? Does it make sense? And can we do anything about it? So that's, you know, that's always the way um, we approach these postmortems. Um, is a lot of times people think it's about the um, like the dead horse, but or cow or dog or cat, sheep, goat, alpaca, llama, um, fish. Um, but it's just as much about um, the other animals that are still on the farm and about the, you know, it's about the, the veterinarian that treated it to let them know what was going on, what, you know, was expected, what might, you know, wasn't expected. Um, and also, you know, for, for the owner, um, one of the important things to know is just, you know, what, what happened, right? If something happened to your horse, you know, I think, you know, at least for me, when this had me, you know, it helps me to know um, what was going on. Um, so that's how, so that's what my job is. My job is to take apart the puzzle in order to figure it out, right? You know, you take, take everything, pull it all out, um, then do all of the tests, um, look at the, the 
you know, the slides, look at the tissues with a microscope, put everything back together. And it's a great job. And hopefully get an answer that is going to be useful. Um, and, and an answer that's useful could mean, um, you know, it could mean just like, you know, what, what happened, um, what could I do next time? Um, or just, you know, I know I made the right choice. You know, that's, that's the type of, all of those things are, are useful um, information. So, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's great. So yeah, so and I also get excited about this stuff. Um, so does anybody, so this is kind of an unusual, this is not where most veterinarians um, end up um, in, in their professional life, but it's where it's, you know, it's where I ended up and it's, it's a great place to be. And it's something that um, is really valuable. Um, not weird at all, I know, isn't it great? Um, but does anybody have any questions about some of the things I do or how I got anything? Anything. You can either, um, however you want to do it. I have a question, Dr. Kennedy. Yes. Um, say if I had a horse or a cow that passed. Um, is your office a resource for the community to bring their animals to, or is this strictly for like UK farms? Uh, it's for, so it's for everyone. Um, um, and what we do ask is like that it's something where the veterinarian um, with the owner is going to be the one um, to submit it. So it's going to be through a veterinarian. Um, some people ask, you know, how do they get them here? Um, a lot of times there is a professional service um, in our community and in a lot of other places where somebody will come and pick up the animal and take it to the laboratory for you. Other people sometimes will, you know, load them on their own trailers and bring them here um, themselves. Um, and so, so that's how they get here. Um, and again, it's, you know, through a veterinarian, but anybody in the state can submit something if they have a veterinarian to work with. Um, so the autopsy for a horse costs about $300 um, or a little more, depending on um, if you need um, more of an exam done than we regularly do. Um, so somebody asked about, do we cremate the horses after it's done? Um, People can have their horses cremated. There is a, um, a business, uh, there's a person in, in the Lexington area who does horse cremations. We don't do them here. Um, otherwise the, the horses are, are disposed of, um, but people can, can have their horses cremated. Lots of people have their dogs and cats cremated, you know, as well. Um, not many people have their cows cremated, but I guess, you know. Um, so let's see, so we have that, what did you need to do to, st um, to, to train for this? So, um, after vet school, which is four years for me. So then I did three years of training, um, at Texas A&M, um, for pathology and then, then started, um, into, um, work. So vet school. And then another three years of training, and then there's a a uh, examination as well. Let's see. Any more questions? So, is it a it is a hard job, but it's it's really really a good job, really good job. All right. Any other questions? Um, how long does it usually take to, uh, do, uh, what's it called again? Necropsy? Mm -hmm. Necropsy or whatever? So, um, so for us, because we have those technicians who are really, really fast. So you saw in real time how long it took, um, which is 10 minutes. 
from the time Sarah put the horse onto the table until she got all of the um, intestines out, all of the guts out for me. So then it's um, it's another 25 minutes or so um, to take samples and for me to look at the tissues. So it's about half an hour to 40 minutes just out doing the actual postmortem itself. And then once I get back to my office and start getting the test results and um, looking at it microscopically and getting the report together, that's probably another 45 minutes to an hour. So total time for me to, to do a necropsy from opening the horse to writing up the report is between you know an hour to an hour and a half um, is the total time. But usually out on, on the necropsy floor, it's between 40 minutes and an hour. And so my official title um, is I am an anatomic veterinary pathologist. So anatomic meaning that I look at um, the organs, the animal itself, rather than like a clinical pathologist is one who looks at specific fluids and, and things like that, blood, uh, other fluids. So I'm an anatomic pathologist. Am I stumped sometimes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And that's really frustrating um, because there's certainly um, sometimes when I just, you know, as hard as I try and as hard as we look, sometimes you just can't figure it out. You just can't figure it out. And that's um, that's hard to explain sometimes too. That can be really hard for the owner um to understand um yeah but it can be really hard but yeah it, it definitely gets stumped um and so then Bailey had asked what what do we do with the horses when they're done so they are taken um by a service a, a rendering service so they become like um into like uh protein products fertilizers that's things they don't go into um animal feed, um, but some people do cremate them. Any other questions? Yes. Right. Yes. So the necropsy fee covers um, everything. Um, so that, um, you know, anything that comes in with that animal. Um, it is really, it is a great deal. It really is. It's, 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 um, it seems, it sounds expensive, you know, three to $500, but it's actually, it's, it's a lot, a lot of testing. Um, where did I go to school? So again, I went to, um, Michigan state, um, for my undergraduate and vet school. And then I did my training, um, at Texas A&M college station. So would the owner get the option to bury the animal if they wanted? No. So um, so one of the things, um, so if you're familiar with the term, like, like biosecurity, right? So making sure that diseases don't go, you know, don't spread out. Um, so because, you know, we have, even if a particular animal doesn't, have a disease that could be communicated to another animal. They've been in our laboratory where there's all different kinds of specimens. So the only way people um, can get their animal back is through cremation. So that's why a lot of people will take, as you know, like a lot of people will take tail hair um, and, and things like that from their horse before they, um, before they bring them in. Because um, the only way, and cremation is expensive. Um, but um, yeah, that's the only way they can get us anything back is through cremation, just um, for safety. Okay, good to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, books or a website for to learn more about it. I can get that information um, to Dr. Little um, for you all if, if you're interested in that. 
or let me put in um, let's put in line. Okay, back to Laura Kennedy at uky.edu. All right, so if you have any questions, you can also, that is my email address, um, and, and you can send uh, send an email to me um, anytime, um, or if you have something, um, yeah, anytime. Yeah, so it was um, eight years in college total, and then three years of training. So it was, uh, um, as for how long do you need to be in college? I was in college for 11 years. So it was a long time. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Dr. Kennedy, thank you so much. That was super interesting. I know we all learned. Cool a lot today. So yeah. um, if so, there are any other questions you all have, you can feel free to email them my way and we'll get them over to Dr. Kennedy. But um, again, thank you so much. And we appreciate you all coming in. Make sure you put your name and county in the chat box if you haven't already. And um, there's no December meeting. So we'll meet you all back in January for our next presenter. Cool. Thank you. Thank yep. you, Dr. Kennedy. Thank you all. Since we're not going to see you, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, Dr. You. Kennedy. So, thank you. That Willa has a question. Hi, this is Erin. She had a question. Yeah, excellent. How many hours do you do it per day? So, um, so I have, um, this is one of the really nice things about this job. I have um, an eight to five job. So I have an eight hour day, um, sometimes a little more, uh, sometimes a little less. Um, and I work inside, um, climate controlled, um, can be a little, a little stinky, but, <laughs> um, but I have, it's actually, um, I have very regular hours um, and so if I'm doing necropsies, it might be four to six hours that I'm actually physically out there, um, but that's not every day. Um, I'm actually only out on the floor um, doing necropsies one day a week. Um, we have multiple pathologists and we rotate through. So I spend some time out, out on the floor and then the rest of the time trying to put it all together. Is that it? 